My name is Joe Turner. Today, I'm going to show you the carbon fibre robotic winder that we have here. But before we talk about this robotic winder, let's talk about carbon fibre. Carbon fibre is a very light, very strong material that has lots of applications from rockets to telescopes to boats to cars to bikes. It's a extremely popular material because it's so strong and it's so light. Here we have a carbon fiber tube that I rolled myself. This tube was created by getting some carbon fiber fabric and wrapping it around a mandrel, which was an aluminium tube, and impregnating it with a copper tube resin. It's a very strong tube, it's very light. Now, if I want to build bigger carbon fiber tubes, by the way, they don't think, that process is impractical. So, what we do instead is use this sort of material, which is the carbon fiber tote. This particular tote is 12K. What that means is it's got about 12,000 micro strands of carbon fiber, which makes it extremely strong, very, very strong. Here is an example of a very basic tube that I've tried to wind. It's obviously still very much experimental, but it gives you an idea of what you can do. So, let's talk about this machine. Here we have the mandrel. The mandrel that we have to wind the carbon fiber onto to create the part that we are making. This, car, this mandrel is turned by this stepper motor. This is a NEMA 23. Around this side here we have a little uh, gear. It's a uh, timing belt gear. And we have another one here on this axle here. And this then drives the mandrel. The mandrel has a pillow block bearing at this end and then one over at this end. And this helps to ensure that it, it runs smoothly. The stepper motor, uh, the computer sends the stepper motor a pulse. Every time it receives a pulse, it turns a very small amount. Send lots of pulses and it will turn this a corresponding amount. Now, here we have what we call a train. This train moves back and forth along this three meter stretch we use a timing belt which is six meters long and it also has a NEMA 23 stepper motor here a little gear and over here on the other end we have another gear pulley here now you'll notice that all of these parts are made with um, you'll notice that a lot of them have made this white material, this black material. This, these are actually 3D printed. We use 3D printer to make lots of these parts. Uh, this part took eight hours to print. Now, on this train here, we have what we call the epoxy resin bar. When we go to create a tube, we will mix up some epoxy, we'll put it in, into the bar. Now when the carbon fibre machine is running, the carbon fibre comes down from the carbon fibre spool right down here to the back roller. These are guides to make sure that the carbon fibre doesn't run off the roller. Then it comes here over this roller here. Then it goes under this roller right here. You might not be able to see that. Right at the front here. And that means that the epoxy on the, can get right into the into the carbon fiber tote. Then it comes up between this pulley and this device, which is what we call a doctor blade, and that helps to remove excess epoxy. Then the carbon fiber goes over this roller and then under this device here, which helps to then get the carbon fiber onto the mandrel where we want it. Now, we also have some switches. These switches, this one switch here, and we have another switch down the other one. Now these switches 
both are limit switches. So if this train hits that switch, the computer turns everything off and it won't let the system run. It helps to protect the system. But this switch is also a home switch. So the first thing we do when we start a job is we tell this to come over to here and it, hit, it hits the switch and then it moves back one centimeter. That is its home position. Let's now look at the computer and the electronics and see how that works. So let's go over here. Now this might look a little untidy but it is well thought out. We have two boxes in here. They are drivers and they one for each of the stepping motors. We have a logic board that allows us to connect this to the computer using a parallel port cable and if you look here there's the computer it's just a um, five-year-old machine well very suited very well suited for the task and here is the program that we use it's called Linux CNC and it's what we use to send these instructions to the step motors so they know exactly where to move. This is an example of the G code and this is how it looks. So why don't we do a bit of a wind? Now we've already started doing a wind so what we'll do is we'll just press uh, and we've actually pulled it so what we're going to do is press the S button on the keyboard and then that should start it up. So if you press the S button now come here a little bit closer, you'll see that the carbon fibre is starting to roll up and it's it's uh, coming up right close to the previous run, the previous pass. When it gets to the end it has to come all the way back. Now this is obviously a dry run, we have no epoxy in there, but this is a, an excellent way to test the robotic winder without making too much mess. So we'll let that go, just so you can see it wind a bit more. There's a lot of work and a lot of testing to get it this far so far. And that looks really good. I'm very happy with that section there. Here it's not so good, but we'll get there. So as you can see, as you can see, there's a lot of work in this. There's uh, also a program behind the scenes that you have to that I wrote that you tell it how long you want the tube to be, and it will generate the code that this computer uses to send to the motors. There's also a lot of maths behind it. It's a basically a geometric problem that we need to solve, how far away the carbon fibre is from the mandrel, how wide the mandrel is, the diameter, and also what angle you want to lay it at. And it's, uh, uh, it's quite challenging, but it's um, hopefully soon we'll have some carbon fibre jibs that we can use for our other projects. Thank you for watching.